if you were, say, on vacation, somewhere hot and sunny, and you had the day off and you could have the perfect light day, what different rays would you be looking to get at different times? And what would that look like for you throughout the day? Yeah, so sunrise first, um, ideally at exa- like around daybreak or like right when the sun pops over the horizon. When I was down in El Salvador over Thanksgiving, we were doing some morning sun gazing right as the sun was coming up. And it was incredible how quickly the sun moves at the equator, like or near the equator. It was 13 north latitude. Um, you can literally watch it moving. It's crazy. So you want to stay out for sunrise and then ideally stay out into the transition into UVA rise as well, which you can also track on like the My Circadian app. Um, if you don't want to use an app and you kind of just want to intuitively feel into it, what I noticed is in El Salvador, at least when things are moving really fast, UVA rise was something like maybe 20 minutes after sunrise compared to here, right this time of year, it's maybe like 40 minutes after. And in the winter, it's like 90 minutes after. So like things are moving much more slowly up here. But down there, you could really feel the transition from the sunrise light into the UVA rise. And it kind of adds like the way I describe it is like a little spicy kick, like a little bit of yang energy into the sunlight, like where sunrise feels very warm and nurturing. Uh, the UVA rise, like when it comes, the UVA light comes into the spectrum, it feels like a little bit of spice added in. And so you want to stay out into that transition because UVA light is really important, not only for the nitric oxide story, but it also stimulates receptors on the skin and eyes called neuropsin, which is a UVA light detector. Interestingly enough, neuropsin is also present within the testes and is directly related to fertility and testosterone production. And so all of the like influencers out there that are sunning their balls, like it's actually evidence informed, I would say. Um, And that UVA light actually has a bit uh, more ability to penetrate into the skin versus UVB. So you're actually getting that direct benefit um, of UVA light exposure onto the neuropsin receptors in the testes. But you're also, of course, getting the benefits of infrared light as well. Um, You're getting the nitric oxide and blood flow benefits and like across sexes, it's going to be beneficial to get as much skin as exposed as you want and as you can um, to support sexual function and overall health and blood flow and cardiovascular function, all these things. So the UVA rise piece is really good. And then after UVA rise, um, the next milestone, I guess you would say, is like sometime uh, around solar noon, which is when UVB and UVA light are at their peak. And so depending on how much melanin you've got and how much you can handle, that would be a time where you're maximizing your vitamin D and your POM C production from UVB light. Um, And then, you know, that kind of basically wanes and goes lower throughout the day. And then you approach sunset again, which kind of mimics what you get at sunrise. So I would repeat what I did at sunrise at sunset as well. And then starting at sunset is when, you know, all lights are off. Um, if any lights are coming on, they're going to be red. If there's any lights that aren't red, they're going to, you're going to have blue blockers on, but ideally just helping to create that, um, very dim lit red light environment, if you're going to use anything at all, and then gradually wind down for bed. And if you're at that equatorial environment, it's very easy to just lock into a healthy sleep cycle. So like when I was in El Salvador, I was waking up at like 5:45, and I was going to bed at like eight. Um, and I was just naturally really tired, right? Cause we were getting intense sun during the day. I was locked in with like the sunrise and the UVA rise. And like, I was super active and social throughout the day. So like I was ready to go to sleep very early and it was very easy to get into that rhythm while I was there. Um, and I think that's a lot of people's experience as well. So that's kind of what like the light milestones throughout the day would be sunrise, UVA rise, midday and sunset. For somebody who is say really sick right now, and they want to optimize their light for everything we're talking about today. You mentioned this trip to El Salvador. Is there one specific place you could recommend that gets the best light year round? Well, I know even equatorial locations typically have like a rainy season and a dry season. So, I mean, I don't know if it's going to be perfect all the time, but I actually, um, speaking of places people can go, I know Dr. Francisco Gutierrez, who was on my podcast recently, he's opening a retreat center. I think it actually opened this um, month down in El Salvador where people can come and stay and like kind of kickstart their healing process. And I think they, they have like cold and obviously like sunning decks and like good quality local foods and all the things. And, you know, you can basically stay there and start to get into a healthy rhythm to help expedite your your process. And then 
you know, you can go home or you can, you know, stay for however long I imagine. But yeah, grounding all day, sun, sunrise, good community, good food, like all the things. So that would be a really great option. And I think El Salvador is also very special because it has a lot of volcanic activity and places with higher volcanic activity have better magnetic flux in the environment. So magnetism in the environment is like mana for mitochondria. It's like a superfood for them. Um, and so I think that's another reason why El Salvador in particular is quite special with regards to not only having good quality sun and also great beaches and everything like that, but also this high magnetic flux. And that's kind of like a perfect trifecta for supporting mitochondrial health and overall healing. Um, just by like, uh, you know, supporting the mitochondria at this very fundamental level. And I'll just say like, personally, when I went down there, I had been dealing with some gut issues after having food poisoning. And within a day of being down there, all my symptoms went away. And by the end of my trip on the eighth day, so seven years prior, I was living in black mold and my health was kind of really crappy at the time. I had just started grad school at Princeton and like was super stressed all the time and like commuting a really long way. And I developed this mole like on my scalp line somewhere around here. And it was kind of like, it was pretty large and dark and kind of jagged. And I'm guessing it was probably like a low grade basal cell carcinoma, but I had already had a lot of disdain for doctors. And I was like, you know, maybe if it progresses or there's an issue or it starts to hurt, I'll go get it taken care of. But I just left it there. Um, and on the eighth day of my stay in El Salvador, it literally fell off my head. And there's nothing there now. So like I directly experienced like there's something special about being on that land down there that is like not like I've experienced anywhere else. And so I definitely and, and also given like, um you know, their economy is really burgeoning and like there's a lot of expats down there. It's like just a really good place to go. It's also not too far. It's literally a four hour flight from Jersey to get down there. And, you know, it's not a huge country, so it's pretty easy to get around. There's, you know, you can take Ubers and things like that, but there's also a lot of mitochondriacs down there already that are very welcoming and supportive to people who want to come down and support their healing process or like join the community. So it's a really good place to get a kind of like a kickstart if you're somebody who's really sick and looking to make some, like build some momentum early on so that you can help and, and build your body back, um, in a good way that's like sustainable. And then you can build healthy habits and, um, bring some of those back with you wherever you are, or maybe you end up moving down there. I know so many people have moved down there now, so it's like, it's the, the trendy thing to do. And I don't blame them. I definitely want to get a second place down there. At some point, I'd also like to have a second branch of the lab down there as well. So we can study more equatorial sunlight compared to more northern sunlight as well so there's lots of perks to being down there um but yeah that's what i would say that's where jack cruz is right yes were you staying with him yes i was there with him the whole time <laughs> if you enjoyed that clip you're gonna want to head over here and catch the full episode i'll see you over there UV light produces this complex pro-hormone in the body called pro-opiomelanocortin or POMC. POMC is cleaved into 10 different hormonal products, one of which is beta-endorphin, which is a natural opioid that the body makes in response to UV.